no idea if it was venomous or not, so here's what might happen next. If it wasn't venomous, consider yourself lucky. You're probably gonna be fine. Still, any snake's fangs carry thousands of bacteria on them, and when they penetrate the skin, these little pests get into your blood to wreak havoc inside your body. The most terrifying of them cause tetanus, a severe condition that's incurable if you don't get medical help in advance. Worse still, you might be that unfortunate person to have an allergy to snake saliva. Like the bees or peanuts, oh yeah, peanuts can be shady. When enzymes in the saliva mix with your blood, your body starts trying to get rid of them. It doesn't realize it's basically fighting itself, so the conflict quickly escalates and you begin feeling nauseous and weak. Eventually, it becomes hard to breathe, and you may even faint. So, even if you've been bitten by a non-venomous snake, call for help pronto. Then, there's a worse scenario. The snake was indeed venomous. Every snake species has its own kind of venom that acts differently from others. Let's see. Ah, it can affect either heart and nerves, muscles, or blood vessels. It always starts with a sharp pain at the place of bite. The snake opened its mouth wide, punctured your flesh with its two upper fangs, and injected its venom through the channels inside them. The venom goes straight into your bloodstream, and that's when the real black magic begins. If the bite marks are clearly seen on the smooth skin, and there's nothing else, it might have been a crate. If the bite starts swelling, it was probably a cobra. You start feeling dizzy, hot, and sweating right away. But that's not venom yet, it's you. You're scared of seeing those bite marks, and the hormones adrenaline and cortisol rush from your adrenal glands into your blood to make you blush and tremble. Your heart's beating faster now, Uh uh-oh, helping the venom spread more rapidly. Soon, you'll start feeling stomach pain and cramps. The toxic enzymes in the snake's venom are reacting with your blood, getting to internal organs and muscles. They're all close to each other, so the toxic stuff hits them quickly and aggressively. And when the venom has gone through your liver, kidneys, and heart, which takes about 15 minutes, it spreads to the nerve endings. It's at this point you begin losing touch with reality. Literally. At first, your eyelids will become increasingly heavy. Eyelid muscles are some of the smallest in the body and have few nerves, which makes them an easy target for venom. Then the toxins go on and on through your circulation, filling your smaller blood vessels like a sponge. And as they do, nerves stop functioning from your head down because they're controlled by the brain. It's just getting worse, isn't it? From your eyes, the numbness spreads across your face. Your lips and cheeks become tight, making you look as if you're annoyed with something. Within an hour or two, you will lose the ability to speak and see. The nerves in your face will have turned off completely. But the effects of the bite will go further down, short-circuiting your tongue, lower jaw, neck, diaphragm. Oh boy. When this happens, unfortunately, you're almost beyond rescue. If the diaphragm stops responding, your lungs can't function properly and you stop breathing. And we really shouldn't do that. If you're lucky enough, though, the bite could be light, and then the numbness will not affect your vital systems. It'll still spread from the head down your whole body, but won't be able to get deep inside, going through your top layers, so to say. You might lose feelings in your fingers and toes, your skin, and even be unable to move properly. But if you can see and breathe, the symptoms might go away by themselves in a few days. Don't bet on that, though, and call the ambulance as soon as you realize something's wrong. Finally, all this may be completely irrelevant to you, because what you feel is not numbness, it's heartache. Both cobras and elapids have a type of venom that goes straight for your heart. When it gets there, and that's pretty soon, it might make the main muscle of your body beat faster or slower, as well as causing irregular beating. This is a huge strain on your heart. You know what to do. Other muscles can also be affected, especially by sea snake venom. It has special toxins that target muscles, and as your eyes get heavy, you might also feel cramps, first in your stomach and then rapidly spreading to your arms, legs, and chest. You will have trouble moving because your muscles will grow stiff, and touching anything will become an ordeal because of the tenderness. In the end, the venom may make you lie in bed and wait until it goes away. 
if it goes away. Boy, let's just pile on, shall we? Now, if you look at the bite mark and see it swelling, and there's blood from the two punctures, it means you've been bitten by a viper. This venom acts differently and is even more terrifying. Oh gee. Its molecules are larger and can't spread so quickly in the bloodstream. That's why they head for your lymph nodes and act from there. As a result, the venom is slow and painful. At first, you will only feel scared and dizzy because of that. Then, after 15 minutes, the venom will start spreading through your body, beginning from where the viper bit you. The thick and viscous substance will mess with your blood, making it clot and causing bruises. The higher it goes, the more of your body it affects. But this progress is slow compared to the effects of cobra and elapid bites. If you don't get medical help, you will notice the swelling growing every hour. As the venom works its way through your lymph, it will make it go against you, causing even more swelling. Lymph is your body's primary defensive barrier. It's a fluid that contains white blood cells which fight diseases. Venom gets into their ranks and causes disarray. White blood cells attack it to no avail, and it spreads ever further. And when the vile thing reaches lymph nodes, they swell, desperately trying to get rid of the intruder. Production of lymph increases, and the bitten part of your body gets more swollen by the hour. Depending on the potency and amount of venom, your limb will grow twice in size by day 2 or 3 from that bite. Since we're talking about your ankle, it's your whole leg that will get afflicted, foot to hip. You won't be able to walk, of course, and sitting will also be off-limits. The only hope at this stage is to lie in bed and try not to move. Even this late, there's still a chance your body will cure itself. But if there's any possibility to get you to the hospital, what do you think? Yeah, you should still do it. What the heck? When bitten by a snake, you might panic and do it all wrong. So increase your chances of survival by calming yourself down. Fear will make your heart beat faster, pumping blood through your body and with that, the venom. It still needs time to reach your circulation, So stay calm and lie down, keeping the bitten limb below your heart. Gravity will do the job then. Don't ever try to suck the venom out of the wound. It spreads too rapidly for you to help yourself. You won't even get a drop of it out this way, but only increase your heart rate again by straining. Put away that knife and never try to cut the bite to let out the venom. Like I said, it's already in your blood, and you can make matters worse by cutting. If you didn't have infection inside the wound, you might get it from that knife. Applying cold won't help either. Cold restricts normal blood flow, making venom stay where it is and doing more damage to a single place. Venom might also make tissues more vulnerable to frostbite. You could end up losing a limb. Same goes for tight bandages and tourniquets. When blood flows freely, it lets the venom spread, of course, but also dilutes it, making the substance less potent. The bite might not be as dangerous as you think, but by applying a tight bandage, you can triple its power. Hey look, you made it! You're in the good place! Wait a minute. Uh Uh-oh. Never mind. So get this. If someone managed to uncoil all the DNA in the human body, it would stretch out to around 10 billion miles. Hey, do the math. That's twice the distance from Earth to Pluto. And that's not the only awesome thing our body is capable of. Trillions of nerve connections are powering your memory nonstop. According to studies, after looking at 2,500 images for a mere 3 seconds, most people can recall if they have seen these pictures with 92% accuracy. Wow! Your body glows, emitting tiny amounts of barely visible light. This glow is the product of biochemical reactions going on inside your organism. The light waxes and wanes throughout the day. But even though it is visible, you can't detect it with the unaided eye. From 1 to 6 pounds of your body weight is made up of bacteria. And from 100 million to 1 billion bacteria can live on just one tooth in your mouth. So, please brush. It's impossible to taste your food without saliva. All because the chemicals in your food must be dissolved in saliva before they get detected by your taste buds. Even though it sounds like a myth, Eating too many carrots can indeed turn your skin orange. Carrots have high amounts of beta-carotene. That's a compound that can cause keratinemia. 
If you have too much of this compound in your bloodstream, it'll hold on to parts of your body with thicker skin. I'm talking about the soles of your feet, your knees, elbows, palms, and even certain areas around your nose. But worry not, this condition is not dangerous. You can easily reverse it by decreasing the amount of beta-carotene-filled foods you consume. The chin muscles, scientifically known as the mentalis muscles, look pretty quirky, giving us mixed feelings. Just look at these creepy tiny tentacles. And still, they make it possible for us to create all kinds of facial expressions that involve the lips, chin, and cheeks. And yes, they are the culprits behind those weird wrinkles and crevices on the skin of your chinny-chin-chin. All because these muscles don't pull on themselves, but yank on the skin. Now, people can live without some organs, leading a normal life. The human body consists of singular organs and those that come in pairs. And speaking of the latter, you only need one of those to survive. Your small intestine is actually not so small. It's taller than you, measuring around 23 feet. Now, the cornea, that transparent front cover on your eyes, doesn't have any blood supply. Instead, it receives oxygen directly from the air. Human beings develop their unique fingerprints very early in life, while they're still embryos, just three months after being conceived. By the way, even if fingerprints get badly damaged, they tend to grow back to their original pattern. All people are born with a diving reflex. It can get activated and shut bodily functions if one is drowning or is submerged in the water. The human brain is by no means smooth. But if you decided to flatten all those wrinkles covering it, the brain would be the size of a pillowcase, but not as useful. Newborn babies only blink once or twice in a minute. For comparison, a grown-up person blinks at least 10 times within the same time. Our lungs are the only organs that can float on the water, all because they're made up of around 300 million balloon-like structures called alveoli. Also, even if we're perfectly healthy, our lungs are never completely germ-free or sterile. Your nose is a superhero. It's your very own heater, filter, and humidifier. This organ is lined with tiny bone-like shells called turbinates. They contain blood vessels capable of heating the air and goblet cells that can help humidify the air. Also, the air you breathe gets filtered in your nose before going further to your lungs. Now, every time you eat something, your esophagus, the organ your food travels through to reach the stomach, moves in a series of wave-like contractions, pushing the food forward. This is known as peristalsis. There's a bond between your digestive system and your brain, the gut-brain axis. This is why stress or brain issues can affect the way your body digests food. Now, even though hiccups are typically harmless and resolve by themselves after a couple of minutes, they aren't exactly pleasant. So you should probably know that they might occur because of changes in temperature. The density of your brain increases throughout your whole life, all because new neural connections pop up. They appear because the structure of the brain keeps changing too. If you don't want to sneeze, press the skin on the bridge of your nose with your fingers. When you do it, your brain receives an alarm signal. Very quickly, it puts the brake on all those other processes, including the sneezing reflex. By the way, studies have found that sneezing is your nose's way to reset. A sneeze reboots the cells that line the inside of your nose. They're called cilia. The part of your brain that's responsible for vision is in the back of your head. Interestingly, the right side of your brain controls the vision on the left side and vice versa. If you're in some loud place, for example in a club or at a concert, close your ears to better hear your friends. Push the tragus, which is that pointy skin-covered cartilage in front of the ear canal, into your ear. Then turn this ear toward your friend. On average, when a person snores, the sound doesn't get louder than 60 decibels. That's as loud as a regular conversation. But sometimes, the noise level can reach 80 decibels. That's as loud as a working food blender. Just like salamanders regrow their tails, humans might be able to regenerate cartilage. That's the rubber-like stuff surrounding your joints. Scientists have recently discovered that cartilage could repair itself. This process is likely to be the most effective at the ankle not that effective in the knee, and the least effective in the hip. Now, if a person has asnosmia, which is also called smell blindness, they don't distinguish and detect smells. Your eyes never stop moving while taking in visual information. 
otherwise you wouldn't be able to see the whole picture. These movements go unnoticed because your brain is a great video editor. It stabilizes the images and connects tons of fragments into one smooth video. The liver is the only human organ that can regenerate completely. Even if it's a mere 25% of the original liver weight, the organ can get back to its full size. Your mouth burns when you're snacking on pineapple because while you're eating this fruit, it's eating you back. Well, kind of. Pineapple is the only known food that contains bromelain. That's an enzyme that breaks down proteins. Luckily, your stomach acid knows how to deal with the offending enzyme. Now, we also have bacteria that can produce electricity living in our intestines. These bacteria give off electrons, which creates tiny electrical currents. This might be the bacteria's way to generate energy. Deja vu might actually be something like a brain processing lab. There's a theory claiming that it might happen when your brain is moving information from one part to another. If there's even the tiniest delay in that process, your brain will get the same information twice. In this case, it'll process it as an event that happened before. The DEC2 gene mutation allows people to have just a few hours of sleep a night and still feel great. They don't get tired and never sleep in. On average, such people wake up at 4 or 5 a.m. No more than 5% of the world's population has this feature. Your ears might pop or even hurt when you're on an airplane. You can solve this problem by simply chewing some gum. This opens up your eustachian tube. That's a small passage that connects your throat and your middle ear. Opening this passage helps equalize the pressure in your ears and puts an end to the popping. You can also yawn to open up the eustachian tubes. Your feet are likely to become bigger with time just like your nose, and your ears. You see, when people grow older, ligaments and tendons in their feet weaken. This makes the arches flatter, and the feet become wider and longer. So, check this out. There are people who can bend down their pinky without bending the ring finger. But most find it hard or even impossible to do. When they move their middle or little finger, they tend to slightly bend their ring finger too. Yep, me too. Globe luxation is an extremely rare condition when people can make their eyes protrude out of their sockets. Unfortunately, this ability comes with downsides. It can cause numerous eye issues. Some indigenous groups of people, like Tibetans, can survive at altitudes as high as Mount Everest. This rare ability most likely appeared after years of evolution. The ancestors of modern Tibetans lived in high regions for thousands of years and developed red blood cell adaptations, making it possible to survive with dangerously low levels of oxygen. The Baju are sea nomads living in Southeast Asia. These people have evolved an extra-large spleen, serving as a repository of oxygen-rich blood cells. Thanks to that, they can easily spend 5 to 10 minutes fishing underwater without coming up for air even once. Now, about 14% of the population don't have a palmaris longus muscle. Oh, It's actually a rudimentary part of the body, and the need for it disappeared in the process of evolution. So, if you don't have this muscle, worry not. Its absence doesn't affect the work of your forearm anyway. About 5-37% to of people don't have wisdom teeth from birth. These teeth are not really needed anymore. They were important for our ancestors since they helped to chew hard food like nuts, roots, and meat, and saltwater taffy. Nah, I made that up. But since most of the food we eat today is processed, wisdom teeth are now a mere atavism. Most people have just one clockwise hair whirl, but 5 out of 100 people have a double crown. And if both whirls are directed counterclockwise, this makes a person even more unique. Some scientists think there's a genetic link between hair world direction and handedness. A bit more than 8% of right-handed people have counterclockwise hair worlds. But in the left-handed, this number grows up to 45%. A man's brain gets older faster than a woman's. As men age, they start complaining about memory problems and lack of concentration more and more often. At the same time, women don't have such acute problems with memory but they feel depressed more often. Hmm, which one would you choose? Now, when someone is lying, their own nose gives them away. Psychologists from the University of Granada have discovered that when a person tells a lie, the temperature around their nose and in the inner corners of their eyes goes up. 
This phenomenon got the name of, wait for it, the Pinocchio effect. Japanese people have particular bacteria in their intestines. These bacteria help them to digest sushi. The Japanese have been eating raw seaweed for centuries. Microorganisms dwelling on the surface of the seaweed got into their bodies and actively developed. Nowadays, the bacteria help Japanese people digest raw food and prevent different problems connected with food. So, people have as many hairs on their bodies as chimpanzees. The hair count of a person and a chimp is approximately the same. The only difference is that human body hair is mostly useless and so fine that it's almost impossible to see. Humans don't have more genes than other species. In fact, people have fewer genes than a worm. Tomatoes also have many more genes than you do. But we are such complicated creatures. Well, recently, scientists have concluded that the number of genes that a genome contains isn't closely connected with the complexity of a living being. Let's take a breather. <laughs> Speaking of which, your left lung consists of two lobes, while your right lung is divided into three parts. Plus, the lung on the left is a bit smaller since it has to make room for your heart. Your lungs also contain around 1,500 miles of airways. It's more than half the distance between New York and Los Angeles. There are also more than 300 million alveoli, which are tiny balloon-shaped air sacs in your lungs. People have five most obvious senses – vision, smell, touch, hearing, and taste. But that's not all. How about thermoception, the sense of heat? Or nociception, the perception of pain? Or your body awareness, proprioception? To figure out what it is, close your eyes and touch your nose. Got it? That's proprioception in action. This list can be much longer. Some experts state people have from 21 to 53 senses. So your fingers get all wrinkly after you spend too much time in the water. Pruny fingers are caused by the narrowing of your blood vessels. When you stay in the water for a long time, your nervous system makes your blood vessels shrink. Your body sends the blood away from that area, and this loss of blood makes your vessels thinner. The skin starts folding over them, forming those funny wrinkles. Scientists think this process helps us have a better grip when our hands and feet are wet. There are three kinds of cone cells in the average person's eyes. These cones help to recognize the colors in the blue, red, and green spectrums. Thanks to them, most people can distinguish around 1 million different shades. But those with tetrachromacy have four cones in their eyes. This feature allows them to see up to 100 million different hues. This vision anomaly is extremely rare and is much more common in women than in men. Interestingly, most people with tetrachromacy don't even realize they see the world brighter than others. Now, not all people have round pupils. Two people out of every 10,000 have unusually shaped pupils. Most commonly, they resemble keyholes. This eye disorder is called coloboba. Interestingly, some people with this condition don't have any problems with their vision. Only 3 to 22% of people in the world have Morton's toe. It's a foot structure where the second toe is longer than the first one. Michelangelo's David and the Statue of Liberty both have this unusual body feature. Hey, toes up! In some people, saliva accumulates in a gland under their tongue. It can then get propelled out in a stream when a person presses on this gland. If the mouth is open at the moment, a jet can reach several feet. This process, called gleeking, can occur spontaneously. A person accidentally pushes their tongue against the gland while eating, yawning, talking, or cleaning their teeth, and voila! Up to 35% of people can gleek, but just 1% can do it on command. I had a friend in college who did that. Yeah, it was weird. About 18-35% to 35 of people have an interesting reaction to sunlight. They sneeze. This phenomenon has its own name, the photic sneeze <coughs> reflex. In the Greek language, it's called sun sneezing. Achoo! Just like salamanders regrow their tails, humans might be able to regenerate cartilage. That's the rubber-like stuff around your joints. Recently, scientists have discovered that cartilage might be able to repair itself most effectively at the ankle, not that well in the knee, and least effectively in the hip. The human brain is 73% water, just like your heart. That's why if your brain loses even 2% of liquid, you start feeling exhausted. This also makes your memory get worse, shortens your attention span, and puts a damper on your mood. So drink up!
Your brain is constantly processing tons of visual information, around 600 million bits per minute. It all starts when the light goes through the cornea, your eye's clear protective outer layer. Then the light turns into electrical signals. They travel to your brain, and it interprets them into the images you see. It takes milliseconds for this complicated process to happen. People who live to be 110 years and older, called supercentenarians, may have a secret. Researchers have discovered that their immune cells, called T-helpers, might change and adapt to the late stages of aging. These cells are likely to protect them from viruses and other health problems. We've become impressive multitaskers thanks to technology. Or rather, it only seems so. The human brain can't concentrate on two things at once. What it can do is to switch between several tasks really fast. But it makes your attention span shorter and harms your short-term memory and the ability to learn. So put that phone down. <laughs> you may have this rare body feature already and not know about it since sometimes even an x-ray can't spot it. Most of us have 12 pairs of rib bones, which means we were born with 24 ribs. There are some folks, though, that actually have 25 ribs. Only 1 in 200 people have this rare extra feature, and it's called a cervical rib. It generally appears above the first rib, right at the base of the neck and above the collarbone. It's nothing to worry about, though. Most of the time, they're unnoticeable. And if ever painful, they can be safely removed. Do you know how huskies can sometimes have their eyes in different colors? Some people come equipped with this rare feature too. The medical term for it is heterochromia. The name comes from the ancient Greek word heteros, which translates to different, and chroma, which means color. People with this condition can either have complete, central, or partial heterochromia. The complete type means that the person has two completely different colored eyes, say, one brown and one green. Two different colors in the same eye are what specialists call central heterochromia. A person with a partial heterochromia has just a portion of their eye of a different color. You can either be born with this condition or get it, say, after an injury. Still, it's extremely rare. Less than 200,000 people are diagnosed with it in the US. Either way, let's face it, it does look pretty cool. Speaking of eye color, want to try guessing what the rarest one is? I'll spare you the Google search. It's gray. Blue eyes may have been your first thought, and they are indeed already pretty rare. Only around 8 to 17% of the world's population have this eye color. When it comes to gray eyes, though, they're even more special. Less than 1% of people have them. This rare body feature is caused by a lower level of melanin in the eye's layers. If you're interested in meeting someone with gray eyes, your best chance is in Eastern and Northern Europe. Even rarer eye colors are red or violet, but these can sometimes be the result of different health conditions. There are people out there who have the superpower of seeing 100 million different colors without the help of any fancy gadgets. We see colors thanks to some cells in our eyes named cones. Most of us have three types of cones to help translate what we see into the colors that our brain is able to understand. However, specialists think that there's a small group of people called tetrachromats who have four types of these cones. So far, researchers have only been able to identify women with this condition. That little teardrop-shaped ball hanging in the back of your neck, you know, the one that helps with swallowing your food, is called a uvula. The name comes from Latin and translates to little grape. Surprisingly enough, around 2% of people are born with a bifid uvula, which means that this indispensable organ in them is either split or forked. You sure can surprise others with this cool feature of yours at parties. Joking aside though, people with this bifid uvula may sometimes have trouble eating, drinking, and speaking. They might also have issues with digesting food their speech may also sound a bit unusual, but this depends on how much the uvula is split. This particular body feature might not be the perfect trait when going on vacation, but it does allow people to do more with less sleep. They say that famous people like Nikola Tesla, Margaret Thatcher, and Winston Churchill had this super rare feature. This gene, called the DEC2 gene, helps with regulating our circadian rhythms. 
Those are the natural biological clocks that let us know when we should be sleeping or eating by making us sleepy or hungry. A person with this rare mutation can basically go through a normal sleep cycle in less time. They can feel rested even if they slept for only 4 to 5 hours. That's one superpower I definitely want to have. How about a gene mutation that gives you superhero-like bones? They're basically unbreakable. It also makes your skin less prone to aging. Yep, looks like with this feature, you can walk away from accidents unharmed and even withstand the flow of time. Some other people out there come with a very attractive feature, but it can go unnoticed, at least at first glance. They have a little something called distichiasis, which basically means an extra row of eyelashes. Just in case you're wondering about the medical aspects too, it results from a genetic mutation of a certain gene. As beautiful as it may sound, people with that extra eyelash layer can experience some pretty unpleasant sensations in their eyes and, in some cases, even have problems with their vision. If spun glass hair doesn't ring a bell, know that it is, in fact, a condition you might have. I know it's pretty self-explanatory, but just FYI, it causes frizzy and dry hair. It's basically so unmanageable that you literally can't comb it. It also tends to grow out from the scalp in all directions. As for coloring, it comes in either bright blonde or silver. Most of us have hair strands that are cylindrical. People with this condition have triangular or heart-shaped strands or even flat altogether. It's extremely rare with only 100 confirmed cases, but it does become more manageable with age. Most of us humans have evolved to have some specific traits depending on the area of the globe that we live in. But there is a group of people, specifically those that live in higher altitudes, that developed some pretty cool traits. Let me explain. High altitude environments come with less oxygen. Not only do these people survive in these locations, but they've adapted to actually thrive out there. For example, those living in the Andes Mountains of South America have red blood cells that can carry much more oxygen. It makes their overall circulatory system a lot more efficient. People living in similar conditions in other parts of the world have also adapted in their own way. They're able to take more breaths so that they can properly supply their bodies with oxygen. This one is very important when it comes to looks, but means little in terms of a person's overall health. I'm talking about pajeboldism. Those who have it lack melanocytes, those cells that produce hair pigment in some parts of their hair. It's most common above the forehead in front of their hairline, but it can also appear on the eyebrows or eyelashes. Folks who have it are born with this condition and carry it throughout their entire lifetime. If you really want to get rid of it, there's always hair dye available, but I personally think it looks super cool. We all know cilantro really isn't everyone's cup of tea. I don't know about you, but it tastes like soap to me. It turns out it's not actually a preference, but rather a gene that causes the plant to have this vile taste instead. A study performed on a group of about 30,000 people revealed that you can find a particular gene variant in people who say that cilantro tastes soapy. This gene has more to do with the odor of the plant than the taste itself. If you're one of those people but really want to give cilantro a chance, either way, there's a small trick you can try. Or ask the people that cook the meals in your household. You can always crush the herb before using it in dishes. Why does that help? Well, because with crushing, the chemicals that are responsible for the soapy taste are broken down and are less likely to taste unpleasant. Unlike our primate pals, many people still have these foot arches. They help us move. This arch is like a built-in shock absorber for your feet. It's what allows us to bounce. There's another one. It's called the transverse arch, running side to side on the top of your foot. Think of it like a bridge that helps keep your foot in shape. Research says this arch is a big deal too. It's responsible for about 40% of your foot's stiffness. Simply put, it's like the scaffolding that holds your foot together. When scientists snipped the transverse arch, the foot lost a lot of its firmness. But when they cut the bottom arch, it wasn't that dramatic. So, is it a modern human thing? Nope, these arches didn't just pop up yesterday. 
The transverse arch has been around for 3 million years. The bottom arch showed up about 1.8 million years ago. We might as well continue with another element of our feet before moving up to other parts. Our pinky toes are also more important than they seem. Whether you were born without one or have lost it, you can still walk, but pinky ones are important for keeping us on our feet. They provide balance. Inside your foot, you've got 26 bones that team up to make sure you don't topple over. Small toe is a part of this balance work. Our ape ancestors needed their toes to grab, claw, and swing from trees. Today, we've traded our tree climbing skills for comfy couches and binge watches. Okay, let's move up a bit and talk about the appendix. You might think that it's useless, but nope. When a human is in their mommy's belly, this organ starts to do its job. Around the 11th week of development, it starts churning out special cells that produce helpful hormones and compounds. The appendix helps train our immune system's troops, ensuring they're top-notch defenders. It also collects all sorts of foreign substances, aka antigens, from our digestive tract. Yet, as diets evolved, this piece shrank like a deflating balloon. Unlike most other vestigial structures, the appendix isn't always harmless. It can turn into an angry little fireball. By the way, vestigial organs are the ones that have lost their primary ancestral function. These structures mostly lack an apparent purpose. Another famous vestigial example is wisdom teeth. Those are pointless and have been causing us trouble for ages. Yet nearly 95% of us have them. And 90% might even have to deal with the drama of an impacted wisdom tooth at some point. If you don't have them, you might consider yourself lucky. Here's an additional interesting fact about wisdom teeth. Even though your teeth have a mineral softer than what's in shark teeth, new tests show that they're just as resilient. The coating on shark teeth is actually similar in hardness to the enamel on a human wisdom tooth. It's because their surfaces are made of mineral crystals held together by proteins. These prevent them from shattering easily upon impact. So the difference in how we and sharks use our teeth comes down to their design, not their toughness. Anthropologists have examined ancient skeletons. They think our ancestors needed these extra teeth to chew tough stuff, like roots and raw meat. Back then, those extra teeth came in handy. But then, we discovered cooking, and suddenly, our food got softer, and our jaws got smaller. Geneticists have their own take on this subject. It involves a gene called MYH16, which seems to play a role in both brain size and jaw characteristics. Yet, the exact part it played in our evolutionary story is still a bit of a mystery. Now, another pointless thing is the eyelid. Well, not the regular eyelid. You know, that little pink thing hiding in the corner of your eye. Birds and some other furry pals use it to fend off dust and debris trying to mess with their eyes. But in us humans, it's mostly vestigial. Meet the Palmaris longus. About 85% of us still carry it around. Maybe you also have it. You can test it by putting your hand on a flat surface and making your pinky and thumb meet. If you spot a little tendon band doing the limbo in the middle of your wrist, then you've found it. It was there for gripping stuff and swinging around like Tarzan. We can carry on with the grasping trick. Even before you're born, around 16 weeks into your time inside your mom's tummy, you're already practicing your grip. You start by grabbing onto the umbilical cord. When you finally arrive in the world, this reflex helps you hold onto things. Fun fact, small monkeys can hang on one hand for ages, thanks to a similar trick. Yet, we humans lose this super grip when we're around three months old. When you're still in your mother's womb, you also have a mini tail. But as you grow, it disappears, and those tiny vertebrae become your tailbone or coccyx. Humans and our ape cousins don't have tails like other animals. Our ears, too, have vestigial muscles. They help animals hear better and express their feelings. But in humans, these ear muscles don't do much. We've figured out other ways to listen and show our emotions. 
yet some of us can still wiggle our ears with practice. Surprisingly, toenails also count as a vestigial thing. I mean, they function as the initial line of defense. They protect the body against harmful microorganisms. In our evolutionary journey, we used our fingernails and toenails for defense, digging, and climbing. In the modern world, fingernails still come to our rescue, whether it's for peeling fruit or that sweet sensation of scratching an itch. Yet, toenails have retired, but hey, we can apply nail polish to them. For fashion's sake, they certainly work for many people. It's not just humans who have useless limbs or organs. In 1798, an anatomist examined a peculiar bird incapable of flying. He documented his observations. This avian species was none other than an ostrich. Ostriches and cassowaries are just a few examples of birds possessing vestigial wings. Anatomically speaking, these are rudimentary wings, incapable of granting flight to these hefty creatures. Yet, they aren't entirely devoid of function. They serve the purpose of maintaining balance during rapid running. Plus, they elaborate courtship displays, helping birds attract potential mates. Now, when it comes to animals, a lot of them glow, too. Around 76% of ocean animals, including jellyfish, worms, sharks, and sea stars, are bioluminescent. They have a compound called luciferin that reacts with oxygen to create light. And for them, it serves such purposes as stunning predators, attracting prey, or warning others of danger. We humans can glow too. Unfortunately, this glow is super faint. Our eyes can't see it. Our bodies emit light, but it's about a thousand times dimmer than what our eyes can detect. Scientists found that our glow changes throughout the day. It's the faintest in the morning and the brightest in the late afternoon. Our faces glow more than the rest of our bodies. They think it's because our faces get more sun exposure and have melanin, which has components that can boost light production. Some body tricks distinguish us from the rest of the animal kingdom. For instance, do you know that humans are the only animals capable of blushing? It seems we've got the exclusive rights to this rosy-cheeked phenomenon. When we find ourselves in an embarrassing situation, our blood vessels dilate. That's what gives us those blushes. Embarrassment is a pretty complex emotion. It's all about understanding what others think of us. This might be too advanced for other animals. Interestingly, bald uakari monkeys can also blush, but not in the same sense. For them, this is a show of their good health. Speaking of good health, we should honor our gut. Your gut includes the stomach, liver, and more. It's often called the second brain. This second brain has its own nervous system. It has a hundred million messengers. They send info to the rest of your body. Even if the gut-brain connection is cut, it keeps working. It ensures your digestive system functions on its own. Here's a young man in a business suit. He's got a secret. He's in the bathroom, standing in front of the mirror, washing his face with cold water to cheer up. There's no one else here besides him, but he's not alone. The guy looks nervous. He slaps his cheeks, looks in the mirror, and says, Don't worry, we can deal with it. We've been going to this for so long, we will win. He said we, not because he has a split personality. And no, he's not talking to someone else through a small microphone. He said we, because he knows a secret. Technically, he's not all human, but a group of billions of living creatures. Him, you, and all the people on Earth aren't really who they think they are. Only 43% of your body is made up of human cells. The remaining 57% are microbes and bacteria. Now this guy is going on stage to tell us this secret. Get on the scales. See the number? Now subtract a little more than half from it. This is your actual weight. Everything else is microscopic organisms. It's hard to believe because, in this case, your body should constantly change its shape, disintegrating into tiny particles. You would see your skin pulsating and continually moving. Fortunately, this doesn't happen for two reasons. Firstly, microbes are tiny. Their movements aren't visible. Secondly, most of this microbial world is in a dark place we can't see. A place without access to oxygen. 
in our intestines. It's where billions of little creatures are roaming. Feeling kinda crowded, huh? Some of them appeared before we were born, but most were colonists who came with food and water. On your body's surface, all microbes come from the environment. Every corner of your skin is covered with microbes. No matter how you try, it's impossible to get rid of them. There are more microbes than human cells. Our genome consists of about 20,000 genes. The number of microbes' genes in the human body is about 2 to 20,000 million. That means that technically, we're not people, but microbes. Fortunately, it's not so bad. The genome of microbes complements our own. Such a model of existence reveals many opportunities for medicine. The human microbiome includes bacteria, fungi, and other microorganisms, all of them divided into many species, and each type performs its own functions. Some microbes are responsible for vitamin extraction from food. Others help the breakdown of destructive substances. Another type helps your tummy digest food. A separate group regulates your immune system, protects it against ills, parasites, and viruses. Some control weight. Simply put, microbes make your life better, help your body function, and affect your health. There are microorganisms that provoke many diseases. They impair immunity or affect vital organs. Imagine you know exactly which bacteria are responsible for feeling unwell. Next, you find a way to rid yourself of them. It can be some pill with poison against those microbes. You drink it, and the cure erases all the harmful pests inside your body. A disease might appear because of the lack of beneficial microbes. This is one of the ways doctors heal many people in the world. Now let's say you've determined a group of microbes that help strengthen muscles. Then you find out which trace element helps these bacteria work faster and more efficiently. You add this vitamin to food or just get a pill containing a billion of these microbes. As a result, your muscles grow twice as fast. The presence of some microbes or the lack of others can show the state of your entire body. A sample of your microbes can indicate your level of health or the presence of some disease. Any person can improve their body not only with the help of genetic engineering, but with microbial medicine. Studying human microbes is cheaper, more efficient, and faster than expensive, complex gene modifications. This area is just beginning to develop all over the world, but there are already some discoveries. Previously, humanity thought microbes were enemies. We made up many ways to destroy bacteria and viruses. But along with the harmful germs, these cures get rid of the good ones. Now scientists understand that microbes can both take away and save lives. So they started large-scale research on this subject. Let's have a look at a big panda. This animal with an ample supply of fat under its skin is omnivorous. It rarely eats meat. Its diet mostly consists of berries and bamboo shoots. But in winter, there's none of this. So pandas feed on bamboo leaves. That food is low-calorie, there's almost no proteins in it. But still, pandas don't lose weight after a cold winter. Recently, scientists found out how pandas do that. It's all thanks to a unique microbiome. Every winter, a lot of unique bacteria are born in their intestines. These microbes extract and synthesize helpful substances from bamboo leaves better than others, and thus preserve the panda's weight. Scientists put these bacteria inside field mice small rodents began to gain weight much faster. Hamburgers, cakes, and other heavy foods contain calories and help develop colonies of microbes that contribute to weight. Millions of species of microbes have millions of functions. In theory, each of these functions can be used for the sake of humans. So, imagine you need to lose or gain weight, and you just add these microbes to your lunch. Do you want to sleep better or fight drowsiness? Drink microbes that will affect the production of sleep hormones. Do you want to strengthen the bone tissue? Eh, no problem! Bacteria are not only inside our bodies, they're everywhere. Part of the planet is made up of microbes. These tiny organisms are constantly multiplying. Look, there are a trillion of them on your keyboard. One bacterium increases in size and splits into two bacteria. After a few minutes, these two increase and divide again. Four microorganisms appear. Each of them splits in two. The colony of bacteria is rapidly growing. With such quick reproduction, one microbe can make one ton of offspring in just 24 hours. After five days, bacteria will fill all the seas and oceans. 
they will weigh more than the whole planet. Under ideal conditions, bacteria could take over the whole world. However, this will never happen. There are no such perfect conditions for uncontrolled bacterial growth. The speed they multiply at is equal to the speed of their destruction. Dryness, water, light, high temperature, gases, humidity – all these phenomena help control their population. At the same time, microbes are in charge of most of the chemical reactions on Earth. An old apple on the ground is rotting because of germs and bacteria. Mold forms on bread because of microorganisms. But they don't just exist and affect the condition of any material and other living creatures. An endless battle for survival continues in the world of microorganisms. Giant bacteria absorb smaller ones. Microbes with spikes defeat long microbes. There are also viruses that penetrate bacteria and infect them with their cells. A small ball with a virus can destroy an entire colony of microbes. Viruses multiply and take over more and more territories until they meet strong immune cells on their way. There are also creatures resembling robots. They look like diamonds with mechanical legs. Despite this unusual appearance, they're 100% natural. We call them bacteriophages. They have only one purpose – to destroy all bacteria. Bacteriophages are additional protection of the planet from uncontrolled reproduction of microbes. When some microorganisms multiply, they leave decay waste. This waste is harmful to humans. Bacteriophages fight these microbes and save our lives. The coolest thing is that these defenders don't seek to take over the planet. They only attack bacteria. Every second, billions of microbes battle with billions of bacteriophages on any surface. Sounds like a video game. The crystal headed jumps on the bacterium and injects the genetic code inside it. This code has separate elements that connect to each other inside the microbe's body and becomes a new bacteriophage. Then it destroys the bacterium from the inside and goes for the next one. Look closely at your fingertip. There's a lot of life there. The strongest survive, the weak disappear. Wash it off, and new bacteria will come along with the water. Wipe your wet finger with a towel, and new germs will jump on you from there. And the battle will begin again. This is just the tip of your finger. Inside your body, some bacteria are fighting for your health against microbes that want to harm you. Some microbes in our intestine can be responsible for a good or bad mood. There are also parasitic bacteria that can affect our brain, the way we think, and our emotions. Some creatures control the behavior of animals and insects. Scientists constantly make discoveries in the world of microorganisms. So, bacteria are the rulers of our world. They appeared long before humans and the first animals, and most likely, they'll remain after us. Think about that. Now, nobody really knows why we need the appendix, but it's always at the back of the book. Wait, wrong appendix. Some researchers claim the human appendix helped our ancestors process the tree bark and whatever they were eating at that time. As we have a way more balanced diet now, the appendix can disappear from our bodies without any consequences. Another purposeless thing in our bodies is the wisdom teeth. Yeah, they used to come in handy when dentists didn't exist, but now we can ideally make do without them. Your brain will grow by roughly 2% if you venture into space. Under normal gravity, it's thought that fluid in the brain naturally moves downwards when we stand upright. But there is evidence that microgravity prevents this, resulting in fluid accumulation in the brain and skull. When you age, your brain is gradually reducing in size. By age 75, it's much smaller than at age 30, and it starts shrinking at 40. It happens to everyone, so you just have to go with it and keep your brain busy and nimble. If you stare into your eyes in the mirror, you'll see a small pink circle settled in the corner of your eye. This is your third eyelid. Useless for us, but valuable for animals, like birds, to keep dust and scattered debris from getting into their eyes. This might sound familiar to you if you've heard of natural selection. In short, natural selection keeps body parts throughout generations, but some of them are harmful, so they're phased out in the next generation and others that aren't staying, just like the third eyelid. Not only your brain shrinks as you get older, you too shrink dramatically. The bones get more brittle, the backbone gets compressed. It works vice versa too. When you rest at night, your bones kind of relax too 
so you wake up taller than when you went to bed last night. Our ears help us keep the balance, so hearing isn't their only duty. Our vestibular system occupies the inner ear. Canals in your inner ear contain fluid and tiny sensors that look somewhat like hairs, helping you keep your balance. As for hairs, only a few body parts aren't covered with them. These are palms, the soles of the feet, and lips. Hairs grow even in the belly button. Their purpose is to catch lint. Mine does a great job. And not only lint, our belly buttons have an entire animal encyclopedia in them, with a range of about 70 different bacteria. Some of them can also be found in soil in Japan, and even some bacteria typical for polar ice caps. See? You have a whole naval expedition going on and didn't even know it. Only about 43% of you is you. You're over 50% tiny little creatures that mainly live in your gut and other body parts without ever leaving it. Still, even though your cells are fewer than microbial ones, there are, on average, about 100 trillion of them in you. With this in mind, your genes are less than half of what you consist of. If you take all the microbes dwelling within your body and count their genes, it'll be anywhere from 2 to 20 million genes and their combinations. If you sleep, and I recommend that you do, it doesn't mean all of your body sleeps. In fact, sometimes your brain has to work even harder when you're asleep. It needs to process tons of information, and reports usually take time. One thing that indeed rests while you're sleeping is your nose. You won't smell anything nasty in your sleep. The thing is that your sense of smell deactivates at night. If there's some terrible smell in your bedroom, you won't even be bothered. Scientists used to believe we could distinguish around 10,000 smells. Nope. Recent research showed that people could indicate more than a trillion smells. We also remember them better than anything else, and odors can even evoke some distant memories. Meanwhile, our strongest and most emotional memories are usually fake. It's the way the central memory works. It gives us the confidence to believe everything we remember is real, even though we should be confident about fewer details. Now, you don't mind if I call you a mammal, do you? Well, among us mammals, only humans can always walk on two hind limbs and keep that posture for their entire lives. You may want to say that kangaroos or gorillas move in the same way, but kangaroos use their tail as a third leg, and gorillas use the help of their long arms to keep balance. Your bones take part in metabolism, too. Since they mainly consist of calcium, when there's not enough of this element in your blood, bones start shedding it into the bloodstream, balancing your body. And vice versa, when there's too much calcium in your blood, it goes into the bones to be stored for later. Our height, shape of our body, and skin color depend a lot on where our ancestors used to live. But we can adapt to new conditions even within our lifespan. For example, if you move from the plains to the mountains, you'll eventually develop more red blood cells to compensate for the lack of oxygen. And naturally, if you drive from a colder climate to a hotter and sunnier one, your skin will change pigmentation slightly to adapt. Our lifespan is programmed within our cells. They constantly renew and divide, but they have a sort of internal timer that stops at some point. Some cells also stop reproducing sooner than others. On average, cells cease dividing when we reach the age of 100. If we find a way to trick ourselves into turning off the timer, we could potentially live forever. But we'd be a huge mass of wrinkles by then. <laughs> Body fat acts as insulation material energy reserve, and shock absorber. Your body sends the most fat into your waist region because that's where your internal organs are. If something happens to you, this layer of fat might as well protect those organs from serious damage. Your skull isn't a single bone. It consists of 22 different bones, many of which are fused to protect your brain. The mandible, or the lower jaw, is the only skull bone that's only attached to your head with connective tissues and muscles. This is what makes it so mobile. You can move it in any direction you like. And the smallest bone in your whole body is inside your ear. It's called the stapes, and it's no larger than a grain of rice. Some of the strongest muscles in your body aren't in your arms or legs. They're in your head. The masseter is the primary muscle responsible for chewing, and it needs to be the strongest for you to eat normally. 
And you know those muscles that allow you to move your ears? Those are temporalis, located above your temples. They also help you to chew your food. We've got two really fast muscles. They control the eyelids opening. In fact, they're the fastest muscles in our body. Eyes are fragile and need protection. So when the reflex is triggered, these muscles shut the eyes within less than a tenth of a second. We recognize only purple-blue, green-yellow, and yellow-red colors. Everything else is a combination of these three. It's impossible to calculate how many of these combinations the human eye sees, because every single person has slight vision differences. But it's about 1 million combinations on average. Your stomach has an impressive capacity, holding up to a half a gallon of liquids, a whole large bottle of Coke. It's pretty hard to estimate how much hard food you can squeeze into your stomach, since the food is processed with your teeth before it gets down there. There's not enough room for a whole turkey, but who knows, probably a good-sized chicken might fit it. And hey, like my grandmother said, there's always room for ice cream. Now, show me where your stomach with all that cola, chicken, and ice cream is. If you're pointing at your tummy, nope, it's up there, hidden in between your ribs. Your tummy is full of intestines. The human body is this perfectly balanced machine, right? Well, not when I'm using it. Normally, all its parts work seamlessly together to keep us thriving and, well, alive. Each of our organs is essential for our day-to-day activities, from breathing, walking, talking, and coming up with bright ideas that push humanity forward. But are they really essential? Do we really need all those body parts? Or are some of them just ancient relics that we just got stuck with in this weird game of evolution? Take wisdom teeth, for example. Nah, somebody already (laughs) took mine. Yeah, there are those pairs of teeth stuck in the back of your mouth you often have to go to the dentist for. They're also known as third molars, and while they can be used to chew food, a lot of people think they're just unnecessary. And get this, around 22% of people worldwide don't even have all four of them. When they do grow in, they're the most likely to become impacted which means they get stuck in the jawbone sideways and can't properly come through the gums. It's all because our jaws are often too small to accommodate these extra guys. Some smart scientists think that's because we've evolved to have smaller jaws over time. Recent evidence also shows that what we eat as kids might also be to blame, but it's hard to know for sure. Apparently, munching on hard-to-chew foods like raw veggies and nuts can actually stimulate jaw growth while eating soft processed foods can kind of stunt it. And that leaves little space for our back teeth to come in and, you know, do their thing. Will they disappear altogether in the future? I guess we human mammals will just have to wait and see. Now let's talk about the vomeral nasal organ, or as I like to call it, the nose's secret instrument. You see, rodents and other mammals have this awesome ability to communicate with each other using chemical signals called pheromones. And guess what? They have a special organ called the vomeral nasal organ, or VNO, that helps them detect these pheromones. Here's where it gets interesting. While most adult humans have something resembling a VNO in their nose, it turns out that it's basically a useless remnant. Neuroscientists even say that if you look at the anatomy of this organ, you won't see any cells that resemble those of similar organs from other mammals. Also, this organ in humans doesn't seem to be communicating with the brain either. Now, it's not all bad news. Even though the human VNO is pretty useless, it looks like it still might respond to some pheromones. Will humans keep this organ on their evolutionary to-do list? For now, I'd place it in the maybe pile. Now, here's a tail. Animals that feature tails need these structures for a lot of things. Some need it for balance, others for navigation, while some need it to attract potential partners. But did you know that when we're just a few weeks old in our mother's belly, we actually have tails too? That's right, we have a whole little tail complete with vertebrae. As we develop, that tail magically disappears, and we're left with our trusty tailbone. Humans and apes are unique in that we don't have tails, unlike other primates. It's a mystery why apes lost their tails, but we can all agree that it makes us stand out in a crowd. However, once in a blue moon, a human is born with a little vestigial tail. Cute, right? 
well, don't get too excited. Because these tails don't have vertebrae and can sometimes be associated with a tricky condition of the spine. Either way, these tails are usually harmless and can be easily removed with a quick surgery. And let's be honest, it's not like we're going to miss it. After all, who needs a tail when you have arms and legs to get around? Plus, can you imagine trying to find pants that fit with a tail sticking out the back? Not a good look. There's little to no chance humans will end up needing tails in the future, so I'm guessing the tailbones are bye-bye in future generations. Humans also have a funny little fold of membrane in the inner corner of the eyes, called the plica semilunaris. It's basically what's left of a third eyelid, which is still found in some animals, like gorillas and other primates. But here's the funny thing. (laughs) Even our close relatives, the chimpanzees, have this little fold that appears to be useless too. So we're not alone in this eye quirkiness. Speaking of unusual membranes, they serve a variety of functions in different animals, such as protecting the eye from dirt and moisture, or hiding the iris from predators. Some species can even see through their transparent membranes when they're underwater or underground. Now, the reasons why we humans lost our third eyelid is still a bit of a mystery. Maybe changes in our habitat and eye physiology made it unnecessary. Or maybe we just evolved to be too cool for a third eyelid. Who knows? With or without vestigial organs, it's interesting to imagine what humans might look like in the future. Many organs have become obsolete because of our lifestyle changes. Care to have a peek into what we might look like in the future? And in the same vein, or artery, have you heard of the concept of text claw? It's where you spend so much time typing on your phone or laptop that your hand starts to cramp up like a claw. And that's just one of the physical changes that could happen to us if we don't take care of our bodies in this tech-heavy world. But it's not just our hands that are affected. We could end up with 90-degree elbows from constantly holding our devices at that angle and even a smaller brain from all the distractions and information overload. Now I know what you're thinking, we just can't give up technology and go back to the Stone Age. And you're right, we don't have to. But we do need to be aware of the potential negative effects and take steps to reduce their damage. That's why a team of designers put their creative efforts together to present Mindy, a future human whose body has physically changed due to the constant and never-ending use of smartphones, laptops, and other types of maniacal devices. While Mindy's exaggerated changes may not be in our future, the concerns behind them are real. So what can we do? Well, one suggestion is to take regular breaks from our screens and stretch our legs a little. Maybe even encourage some office yoga or dance parties to get the blood flowing. We don't have to give up technology completely, but we do need to be mindful of its effects on our bodies and minds. Many years in the future, we might even get smaller in size. One scientist reckons that if we were smaller, our bodies would need less energy, which would come in super handy in our increasingly crowded planet. It's funny to think about how different our lives are now compared to when we were hunter-gatherers. Back then, we only had to interact with a handful of people each day. But now, remembering people's names is a super important trait, and it might even be something we grow to become better at. Or technology might actually play a role in our evolution. Scientists believe that we could one day have implants in our brains that help us remember people's names. It's like having a biological phone book directly in your body. Wouldn't that be cool? Eh, Who knows? Maybe in the future, we'll even have visible technology as part of our appearance. Imagine having an artificial eye that can see different colors and visuals. And don't even get me started on what we might look like if we colonize Mars. With the lower gravity, our bodies could change in all sorts of ways. We might have longer arms and legs, or even insulating body hair like our Neanderthal ancestors. It's hard to pinpoint what we might look like in the future without very precise data to back the models up. But it's fair to say these changes will be interesting, to say the least. As for me, well, it's too late to say the least. I've said over 1,400 words here already. Well, let's go to Antarctica. Come on, you've got time. Remember to dress warm. 
Ah, here we are, in the middle of endless snow-white plains and ice. The temperature in some places drops to a face-freezing minus 136 degrees Fahrenheit. It's so cold that if you throw hot water out of a mug, it will most likely land in the form of an icicle. But this cold is hot compared to the absolute zero definition. Scientists measure it on the Kelvin scale, where zero is the lowest point. And that's why there is nothing colder than this temperature. All objects consist of atoms and molecules. When the temperature of any object rises, its molecules move quickly and chaotically, producing kinetic energy. If the temperature of an object drops, its molecules slow down in motion, and their energy decreases. So, absolute zero is when the particles stop altogether. There's no movement, which means it's impossible to make it colder. Zero Kelvin is equal to minus 459 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's like three times colder than in Antarctica. So, imagine that scientists created a vacuum room and filled it with gas at absolute zero. What happens if a human walks in there? I can't imagine that this turns out well, so let's send Bob in there. But don't worry, he's a crash test dummy. A little background first. When a hot object comes into contact with a cold one, its molecules exchange energy. Fast-moving particles transfer their energy to slower-moving ones and begin slowing down themselves. Then an equivalent exchange occurs, and the temperature equalizes. But by default, the molecules move quite slowly until they're charged with energy. And at the same time, if you have a heated object, you will need more power to cool it. Yeah, it's a bit confusing. So let's go back to where the fun begins. Yes, if you go to absolute zero, you will freeze in seconds, because all your molecules will start to slow down. But what will happen to the body? Well, let's follow the internal adventures of Crash Dummy Bob. First, its blood vessels narrow in the coldest places. The body distributes blood from frozen areas to vital organs, like the liver, kidneys, heart, and brain. It's like emergency mode. The mannequin's body stores energy and blood for the most important, taking it away from less important areas. Then, a most dreadful thing begins. The body consists of billions of cells. When their molecules come into contact with a cold temperature, they slow down and freeze. Remember what happens to water in a frozen state? Remove the bottle from the freezer and let it defrost at room temperature. You'll see that the volume of liquid will decrease after a few hours. And when the water freezes, it increases in volume. And the human body is more than half made up of water. So, inside our mannequin, its cells get covered with sharp ice crystals that tear the internal structure of the cells. The muscles and blood vessels of the dummy are torn. Its skin gets a dark blue shade, and its blood freezes in its veins. A couple more seconds, and the dummy freezes completely. Absolute zero temperature stops all internal processes. A. Crash Dummy Bob said he wanted to chill, but this is ridiculous. Meanwhile, molecules are not only in living objects. Particles are everywhere, and absolute zero affects them too. The rays of light get the lowest energetic position. Photons slow down, and they can't move at the speed of light anymore. Okay, now it's time to finish the experiment. Hmm, something's going wrong, and the story becomes fantastic and hypothetical. Scientists can set molecules in motion, and the neighboring moving particles don't give them their energy. For some reason, the gas can not absorb the energy. Its frozen molecules slow down the others. The gas penetrates through the walls of the vacuum room and starts a chain reaction. The molecules freeze one by one. It's like they take a nap and charge all the matter around with this sleep. The gas area is expanding. Laboratory walls, doors, and windows are frozen. Scientists are covered with ice. Then the cloud goes outside the building. It's like a white spot that keeps growing and growing. The sun's rays get there, but can't move inside too fast. The zero envelops grasses, trees, roads, and cars. Scientists begin to sound the alarm as soon as a whole city gets inside the absolute zero clouds. The stopping of moving molecules occurs so fast that ice crystals don't have time to damage the skin and body in living bodies. It's not even freezing, but canceling existing life. 
oxygen and carbon dioxide molecules are frozen. The air gets denser. Here, a guy freezes in a jump and remains in the air. Here, a frozen bird continues to hang in the air. Things inside the cold air are similar to a 3D picture. Everything froze in motion. It's like someone took a screenshot of a lifetime and printed it. And while the cloud of absolute zero continues to spread, scientists are rushing to solve the problem. The gas is growing and diverging in all directions. If it swallows the whole Earth, it will stop all the chemical processes on our planet. And without these processes, our home will become just another space rock, a lifeless piece of matter stuck in time. However, the real catastrophe will happen not when it envelops the entire surface of the globe, but when it reaches the core of our planet. This can lead to the release of energy that will destroy the planet. Perhaps the core may resist the absolute zero. But in any case, people are not going to wait for this to happen. The cold gas meets a volcano. Lava flows emit a deafening hiss and freezes. Black clouds of steam billow into the air. The cold cloud penetrates into the volcano. The collision of cold and hot temperatures releases energy. The volcano erupts and launches, not fireballs, but sharp icicles of frozen magma. Meanwhile, heavy rains are beginning to fall all over the planet. When warm air collides with cold air, it moves away because it has less density. The liquid appears in the atmosphere and it forms clouds. Therefore, while the giant cloud freezes one part of the planet, rain clouds drench the other. And now scientists have finally come up with a solution. They've created a gas with an altered molecular structure that can stop zero Kelvin temperature. So imagine you're heating water. The stronger the water molecules increase their kinetic energy, the hotter the water becomes. The molecules are moving faster and faster. But not all particles move equally fast. Some of them have medium and slow energy. Moreover, the low energy state of the molecules is more likely. This means that only a few particles move really fast in hot water. This distribution of low and high charge particles is called the Boltzmann distribution. The distribution is everywhere, both in hot and cold objects. If we look at any object at the molecular level, we'll see that there are many more slow-moving objects than fast-moving ones. So, scientists have come up with a solution. They create a gas that works in the opposite direction. It has more moving molecules inside this gas than slow ones. Scientists hope that this gas will wake the sleeping particles up in the absolute zero cloud. So, two gases collide with each other. The cold cloud can't freeze the reverse Boltzmann distribution cloud. There are too many active molecules. So, billions of active molecules charge the frozen ones with energy. All the molecules start moving and share the neighboring ones with their energy. Objects inside the gas cloud begin to wake up. People are slowly coming to their senses. As soon as the molecules come into minimal motion, they start to receive energy from the sun's rays. The particle movement is distributed equally between the two gas clouds, and life returns to normal. The molecular order has been restored. Right. And our little fable here comes to a happy, if not entirely credible, end. Bottom line here, don't worry. Scientists created absolute zero artificially, and it'll never happen naturally. There's no such temperature anywhere in the universe. Particle movement remains even in spaces farthest and darkest corners with record low temperatures. The appearance of absolute zero is impossible because there will always be molecules around that move and share their energy with each other. Oh, by the way, no humans, animals, or crash dummy Bob were harmed in the making of this video. Are the lawyers happy? Okay. Most people are sure that humans only have five senses, but that's not entirely true. Taste, touch, smell, sight, and hearing aren't the only ones we have. Scientists claim that people have between 9 and 20 senses in total. These include thermoception, the sense of warmth, equilibrioception, the sense of balance. There's also the sense of time, although not everyone seems to have that last one. We used to think that there were just eight different blood types, but in reality, there are over 30 known blood group systems. Here on the bright side, our favorite blood group is B-positive. Get it?
For every pound of fat you gain, you generate one mile of new blood vessels to supply oxygen and nutrients to your body. Your stomach produces a new lining every six days to avoid digesting itself. Nerve cells transmit 1,000 nerve impulses a second. They travel between 1 and 268 miles per hour. Our DNA contains 100,000 viruses. Scientists have discovered one that goes back 100 million years. Your body emits visible light. You're the brightest at 4 p.m., and your glow is the least visible at 10 a.m. Unfortunately, this glowing is 1,000 times less intense than what your eyes can see. Sweat is mostly water mixed with proteins, sugars, ammonia, and a lot of other stuff. It even contains tiny amounts of trace metals like copper, zinc, nickel, iron, and so on. What makes sweat taste salty is the sodium it contains. Plus, the more salt you eat, the saltier your sweat is. Your body's trying to get rid of the excess, and the fastest way is to sweat it out. If you walked 2 miles per hour, you'd have to walk for 20 hours straight to lose 1 pound. And it would take you 518 days and 8 hours to circle the equator. Earwax isn't actually wax. It contains fat, skin cells, sweat, and dirt. Your brain gets three times bigger over the first year of life and reaches its full maturity when you're 25. 60% of it is fat. Your brain generates around 23 watts of electrical power, which is enough to run a small light bulb. Humans can't really multitask. Your brain can't perform more than one action at the same time. It switches between them, which doesn't save time as you might think, but increases the possibility you'll do something wrong and makes the process longer. When you have an exam to take, or you're at work trying to focus on an important task, try chewing gum. Research showed it can help you stay concentrated for longer on tasks that require your full attention. Studies even say that it's a better test aid than caffeine. There's nothing special in the gum, but the act of chewing wakes your brain up. The effect doesn't last long though, just for 20 minutes. Embryos develop fingerprints at three months. Your bones are four times harder than concrete. The strongest bone in your body is the femur. It can support up to 30 times the weight of a grown-up person. Even crazier is that our bones are made up of composite material, meaning they're both hard and elastic at the same time. Sunburn is the result of radiation exposure. When your body's natural defense mechanism gets overwhelmed trying to fight UV rays, a toxic reaction occurs that results in sunburn. Goosebumps are an evolutionary reflex left over from our ancestors. The release of adrenaline made their hair stand up, and they look scarier to approaching predators. Your body produces one to three pints of saliva every day. It helps you digest food and fights off infections. You also have a lot of bacteria in your mouth. Yeah, that's right. The average amount of bacteria in a person's mouth is almost the same as the number of people living on Earth. That's hard to digest. Each human has roughly 150,000 hairs on their head. Every strand grows around one half an inch per month. If we added the growth from each hair, it would measure the distance of 10 miles in just one year. Your hair is also a lot stronger than you think. A single strand can hold three ounces, which is the weight of an apple. If we combine the strength of all the hair on your head, it could support the weight of two elephants. Hey, let's try it. The beating sound your heart makes is the clap of valve leaflets opening and closing. Your heart doesn't replicate its cells unless you have an injury. Your corneas are the only part of your body that don't get blood. They get oxygen directly through the air. When you're sitting or standing upright, it's easier for you to recall some positive memories that make you feel good. Some believe it's because sitting up with your back flat boosts blood flow and your brain gets more oxygen, which helps it function better. The man who has the deepest voice in the world, and that's definitely not me, can produce sounds that humans, including him, can't hear at all. But elephants can hear those sounds. Veins look blue because light has to go through layers of skin and fat to reach them. Your skin scatters a lot of the red portion of white light before it reflects the blood. This leaves only the blue light to bounce back to your eyes. A person who has anosmia is unable to detect smells. Phantosmia is the opposite condition, when someone smells an odor that isn't actually there. The human brain has 100 billion neurons. 
it's 73% water, and the same is true about the heart. That's why if your brain loses even 2% of its liquid, you start to feel tired. It also makes your memory worse, shortens your attention span, and puts a dampener on your mood. The earliest known person to have had blue eyes lived in the Stone Age, 7,000 years ago. Your right kidney is probably smaller and sits lower down than your left kidney to make room for your liver. By the way, your brain makes sure you don't drink too little or too much water. After you swallow some liquid, your mouth and throat start to fire signals to your brain, telling it to stop drinking. Otherwise, you'd keep gulping down water for the entire 10 to 60 minutes it takes the liquid to get to your cells. Your eyes can see something for a mere 13 milliseconds, and your brain will already process this image. The average blink lasts from 100 to 400 milliseconds. Even though the tongue isn't the strongest muscle in your body, it never gets tired. That's because of the way it's built. It's made up of eight interwoven muscles. The tongue is the only muscle with ends not connected to bone. Other muscles join two bones at both ends because that's how we pull and make a motion. There are around 700 different species of bacteria in your mouth. Over six billion of them live there. Your skin is your largest organ. It can cover the surface area of two bath towels it accounts for around 16% of body weight and is around 22 square feet. If you typed 60 words per minute for 8 hours a day, it would take you 50 years to type the human genome. You get tired pretty quickly when you're out in the heat. This happens because your body is trying really hard to keep itself cool, which puts a lot of extra work on it. So you get exhausted and tired, even if you don't do anything physically demanding. Your body has 78 organs, but only five of them are essential for survival. The brain, liver, kidney, lungs, and heart. Oh, the phone's ringing. Must be something urgent. At 11 p.m. Only, all the gadgets in the house are silent. It's your ears that are ringing. You can also hear some hissing, whistling, buzzing, and even roaring. But all this noise doesn't have an external source. That's why it's known as phantom sounds. They can occur in one or both ears, constantly or from time to time. They're usually most noticeable at night, when nothing distracts you. Women have more taste buds on the surface of their tongues than men do. That's one of the reasons why 35% of ladies and only 15% of guys are super tasters. Those are people who feel flavors more strongly than others. Left-handed people usually prefer to chew on the left side. And right-handed people, well, you guessed it, chew on the right. Even if your fingerprints are damaged, they'll grow back in the same unique pattern. When breathing, a single lung only uses 5% of the oxygen you've inhaled. Hey, can you speak up? I just ate an entire pizza. That's because after eating a hearty meal, our hearing tends to be a bit less sharp. During digestion, most of our bloodstream is directed toward the stomach, which takes away a bit from all the other organs. So, next time you want to go listen to your favorite band at a live concert, make sure to eat a lighter meal to keep your ears pitch perfect. On top of our stomach and left kidney, we have a magical organ that can grow back if we remove a part of it. Our liver can regenerate itself by making new cells called heptocytes. They begin to multiply once the liver is damaged. The seriousness of that damage defines if it can regenerate completely and the amount of time it takes to do so. Ever wondered what's worse for your body? No sleep or no food? Turns out, the lack of sleep is more dangerous. That's because if you don't rest, your body becomes exposed to a lot more risks. After 24 hours without any shut-eye, you can start to have memory problems and find it difficult to concentrate. At just 17 hours without sleep, you start to feel tired and groggy, irritable, tense, and more emotional. Ah! I need a nap. Your pain receptors also become more sensitive, which means everything hurts a bit more than it should. Oh, and it also affects your hearing, too. What? On the other hand, you can be well into your 24-hour period with no food before your body realizes you've stopped eating. In the first 8 hours, you just keep digesting the last meals you had. After those first hours, you start to use stored fats for energy. 
Not eating for more than 24 hours means that your body will start eating away at its own protein, which means you literally start to lose muscle. Rainwater isn't always safe to drink. It can sometimes hold harmful bacteria and viruses. Also, in heavily polluted locations, it may even meet other harmful materials. Some communities out there do depend solely on rainwater as their primary source of hydration. But does rainwater have any other health benefits? Not really, according to current studies. Some of those risky substances may be removed from rainwater if you boil it. But it's best to stick to the safer side and only drink water from sources that are 100% safe for human consumption. Now, we produce sweat mostly to regulate our body temperature and for some added moisture, like the one we need in the palms of our hands for a better grip. But sweat doesn't just show up on our skin. It comes out of around 5 million pores on our bodies. We're literally stepping on a quarter of our bones each day. We have just over 200 bones in our body, but about a quarter of those are in a very small surprising area – our feet. Since we have 26 bones in each foot, we end up with literally 52 in both. Now, our eyes produce tears for many reasons, like protecting themselves from infection or clearing up debris, such as smoke and dust, or when your baby done you wrong. But the number of tears we produce is quite surprising – up to 30 gallons per year. That's almost enough to fill a bathtub. Wow, that is heartbreaking. Our blood pressure wakes up hours before we do. That's because in the morning, the body produces a bunch of hormones like adrenaline and noradrenaline. They help give us the energy boost we need during our morning hours, but they also increase our blood pressure, which is usually higher between 6 a.m. and noon. During the night, since we should technically sleep and perform no physical activity, our blood pressure drops down by up to 20%. Speaking of our vital fluid, our blood accounts for about 10% of our total body weight. We tend to think of our body weight as being mostly made up of muscles, fat stores, and bones. But there's a lot more to it. In a fit adult person, bones make up 15% of the total body weight. About 40-45% to is left to muscles, about 15% to fat deposits, and the rest are stuff like skin, tendons, hair, and other yucky things. Let's see. That adds up to… yep, 100%. Your lungs aren't twins, they're siblings. That's because they aren't the same size or shape. Your right lung is bigger and tends to weigh more, and your heart is to blame for it since your ticker tilts to the left a little bit. This creates a small indentation in the left lung called the cardiac impression, which is also what funny heart doctors do at comedy clubs. The right lung may be bigger, but it's a bit shorter since it needs to make room for the liver. Doesn't your house have a liver room? Many of your body measurements are quite symmetrical in surprising ways. If you were to stretch out both of your arms, your wingspan, and measure it, it should show how tall you are. Based on these similar measurements, specialists can even produce theories about what ancient humans used to look like. Looks like we've evolved to be increasingly symmetrical to appear more attractive and healthier to attract mates. Hmm. More so. Since we've evolved to also walk on two legs, our symmetrical features help us to move around with the least amount of energy because it creates balance. Now, humans aren't natural champions when it comes to the scent of smell, that's for sure. But our noses can pick up about one trillion different scents. Scientists are still performing research on this subject and believe the number may be even higher. Some dog breeds may be able to notice scents somewhere between 10,000 and 100,000 times better than we do, but turns out the best nose in the animal kingdom may be attributed to the elephant because of its staggering number and type of olfactory receptor genes, over 10,000, while humans and chimpanzees have less than 400. We tend to look at our pinkies as our most delicate fingers, but we do have more power in them than we think. Turns out that, should our pinky finger be lost or affected, the overall strength of our grip may decrease by up to 33%. The liquid in our stomach, made of hydrochloric acid, potassium chloride, and sodium chloride, 
is way more powerful than any acidic food you can think of, like lemons, pineapples, or tomatoes. The pH of healthy stomach acid should be between 1 and 3, so if you think about it, it's just below that of battery acid. Our hair strands are strong too. So strong that research is performed on them to duplicate their resistance into human-made materials. A healthy head of hair should be able to withstand up to 26,000 pounds. It's due to a little protein in the hair strand called keratin, which you can also find in your nails and skin. Now, only about one-third of us humans have perfect vision. There are a lot more glasses and contacts out there than you'd think, making up about 66%. Apart from different eye conditions, our vision also gets worse with age. When we're born, our heads amount to one quarter of our total length. By the time we reach 25, our head will only be one-eighth of it. That's because our heads won't change their size a lot as we grow older, as opposed to the rest of our body, mostly when it comes to the legs and torso. Our brains are these super-powerful computers, and a single human brain cell can hold five times as much information as the entire Encyclopedia Britannica. Maybe you remember that. We've yet to pinpoint the exact amount of data it can support, but in electronic terms, the storage capacity of the brain is around 2,500 terabytes. For comparison, the National Archives of Britain, which keeps over 900 years of history, only takes up 70 terabytes. That's probably the reason our brains need the most amount of oxygen compared to other organs. About 20% of the total oxygen that enters the bloodstream. And that's despite the fact that it makes up only 2% of our body mass. Our normal activities, plus the effect of gravity, make the cartilage in our ankles, knees, hips, back, and neck slowly compress. Once you rest overnight, the cartilage goes back to normal. On average, you are somewhere around 0.4 inches taller in the morning than you are later at night. And that's why they call me Stretch. You have as much hair as a monkey. <laughs> now, I don't mean to be insulting, but your fingerprints are not unique. You can hear better after you cover your ears. Now, can these statements be true, or are they nothing but myths? When a person is lying, their own nose can give them away. Can it be true? Yep. Researchers from the University of Granada have discovered that when a person tells a lie, the temperature around their nose and in the inner corners of their eyes rises. This phenomenon got named the Pinocchio effect. Hey, how about this one? People can have as many hairs on their body as chimpanzees. Can you believe this? Surprisingly, this one's true too. The hair count of a person and a chimp, or any other ape of our size, is approximately the same. The only difference is that human body hair is quite fine and often colorless. This makes it hard to see the sheer number of hairs. Your lungs are identical. It sounds reasonable, but is it true? Well, it's nothing but a myth. Your left lung consists of two lobes, while your right lung is divided into three parts. Plus, the lung on the left is a bit smaller. It has to, to make room for your heart. By the way, your lungs also contain around 1,500 miles of airways. It's more than half the distance between New York and Los Angeles. There are also more than 300 million alveoli, tiny balloon-shaped air sacs, in your lungs. I bet you've heard this one before. Carrots can make your eyesight better. True or myth? Unfortunately, this idea isn't true. Neither can carrots get you better nighttime vision. Carrots are indeed packed with vitamin A. It benefits your body and protects your eyes. But even these veggies can't save you from wearing glasses if you need them. Some people sneeze when looking at the sun. Now, do they? Yes, that's true. About 25% of people have an interesting reaction to sunlight. They sneeze. 
This phenomenon even has its own name, the photic sneeze reflex. Ooh. Shaving body hair makes it grow darker and thicker. Is it the truth? Don't worry, that's just a myth. It might look as if your body hair has changed in thickness, rate of growth, or even color after getting shaved. But it's just an illusion. Shaving makes the tips of hair follicles blunt. That's why they look rougher and darker than usual. But once your hair grows in again, it'll start to look the same as it did before you shaved it. You have unique fingerprints. Ah, this one must be true, right? The problem with this statement is that scientists can't prove that each set of fingerprints is absolutely unique. It does seem to people, but it's impossible to check. And while this is improbable, people with identical fingerprints can actually turn out to be real. People have more than five senses. Is it an appealing myth or reality? There are five most obvious senses – vision, smell, touch, hearing, and taste. But how about thermoception – the sense of heat, nociception, the perception of pain, or the perception of your body awareness, proprioception – close your eyes and touch your nose, got it? That's proprioception and action. This list can be much longer. Some experts state people have from 21 to 53 senses. Your fingers actually get pruny after you spend too much time in the water for your safety. Is it true? What's your bet? Scientists believe so, but first things first, pruny fingers are caused by narrowing blood vessels. When you stay in the water for a long time, your nervous system makes your blood vessels shrink. Your body sends the blood away from that area, and this loss of blood makes your vessels thinner. The skin starts folding over them, forming those funny wrinkles. Scientists aren't 100% sure, but they think this process occurs to help you have a better grip when your hands and feet are wet. People only use 10% of their brains. Oh, how I wish it was just a myth! And it is! Apparently, you use almost 100% of your brain every day. This organ is active all the time, even when you're asleep. When you're snoozing, your frontal cortex, which is responsible for higher-level thinking, and the areas that help you sense your surrounding are still doing their job. For some people, the world is much brighter than for others. Hmm, how come? That's actually true! There are three kinds of cone cells in the average person's eyes. These cones help to recognize the colors in the blue, red, and green spectrums. Thanks to them, most people can distinguish around 1 million different shades. But those with technochromacy have four cones in their eyes. This feature allows them to see up to 100 million different hues. This vision anomaly is extremely rare, and women have it more often than men. But do you know the funniest thing about this? Most people with tetrachromacy don't even realize they see the world brighter than others. Sometimes you can hear better after closing your ears. Well, it seems counterproductive, but can it be true? Indeed, if you're in a loud place, for example, in a club or at a concert, you should close your ears to hear your friends better. Push the tragus which is the pointy skin-covered cartilage in front of your ear canal into your ear. Then turn this ear toward your friend. Voila! You can prevent yourself from sneezing. Oh, that would be very convenient. But maybe it's just a myth. It's true. If you don't want to sneeze, press the skin on the bridge of your nose with your fingers. When you do it, your brain receives an alarm signal. It immediately puts the brakes on all other processes, including the sneezing reflex. Okay, you're gonna finish these five episodes of your favorite series now and catch up on sleep later, but can you? Unfortunately, no. 
You can try to catch up on sleep at the weekend or take lots of afternoon naps during the week, but it won't help. Your body doesn't work this way. If you didn't have enough sleep the night before or went to bed really late, sleeping until noon won't save the day. Even worse, too much sleep will make you feel groggy. Some people have more ribs than others. Is it a myth? Nah, it's true! Most people have 12 pairs of ribs, which makes 24 in total. But 1 in 200 people has an additional 25th rib. It's called cervical and forms at the base of the neck above the collarbone. It can grow on the left, right, or even both sides of the body. Those people who have extra ribs most likely know nothing about this modification. That's because an extra rib rarely forms completely and can look like a thin strand of tissue. In this case, you won't see it even on an x-ray. You should wait for at least a half an hour after eating before you go swimming. Well, it sounds reasonable, but is it true? Ah, that's just a myth. The general idea behind this claim is that eating a large meal makes your blood flow towards your stomach to help with the digestion process. At the same time, your muscles don't get enough blood, which leads to cramps. But in reality, swimming right after having eaten something isn't dangerous at all. Your blood doesn't get diverted enough for it to cause any serious problems. Some people's snores can get louder than a working kitchen appliance. What do you think about this? Well, on average, when a person snores, the sound doesn't get louder than 60 decibels, which is as loud as a regular conversation. But sometimes, the noise level can reach 80 decibels, and that's as loud as a working food blender. Not all people have round pupils. Can it be true? Yup. Two people out of every 10,000 have an unusually shaped pupil. Most commonly, it resembles a keyhole. This eye disorder is called coloboma. Interestingly, some people with this condition don't have any problems with their vision. So let me tell you a tale about tails. There are some cases of humans being born with a tail. There are about 25 confirmed cases known to scientists. Those born with tails, though, won't have any real benefit other than what the tailbone does for balance anyway. The tails have no function other than physically being there, as they have no bones. The tails only consist of nerves, vessels, and muscles. Now, do you find that you're a picky eater? Do you think that coriander tastes like soap? Or you can't stand pineapple on pizza? Really? Well, this may be due to what kind of taster you are. Up to 30% of people are considered super tasters and will experience different levels of enjoyment or disappointment from their foods. Food that is bitter to the super taster will likely be sweet to average tasters who make up 40% of people. There are also 30% of people who are non-tasters and won't find anything too exciting. I guess you just have to develop a taste for that. The vast majority of people have brown eyes. About 79% of the world population share this eye color. Once, all humans only had the brown pigmentation. Until around 6 to 10,000 years ago, and I wasn't around then, when humans migrated to northern Europe. A mutation occurred, helping the eyes to adapt to the change of line. Blue eyes became the most common of the mutated coloration, and all of them today can be traced back to one ancestor from Europe. His name was Chadwick Abernathy. His friends called him Chad, and he was a boulder mover at Stonehenge. Well, not real. Today, blue eyes make up around 10% of the human population. Amber and hazel eyes each take up 5% respectively. Gray eyes are up to 3%. And the rarest of eye colors are green ones, consisting of only 2%. Rarer still is heterochromia iridum, where both eyes are of different colors. It's inherited and also affected by other genetic factors. Only 1% of the human population have this incredibly rare attribute. Do you have a small hole in the front of your ear above the ear canal? This is a preauricular pit. During the first six weeks of a child's development, long before being born, the auricle, 
which is the external part of your ear, will develop. The pre-oracle pit forms when the oracle doesn't fully fuse. This occurs in less than 1% of humans. Although there's speculation that having this little hole is the remnant of gills that we once had from our seafaring ancestors, there is nothing solid to confirm this theory. If you can lick your elbow easily or touch your thumb to your forearm, congratulations! You're among the minority of people. But some people bring flexibility to the next level. This condition is called hypermobility. It allows rare individuals to twist their bodies into weird positions, just like a snake, putting their head between their feet, doing a back bridge, and all sorts of splits. But in some cases, hypermobility can increase sensitivity because such people have a larger medulla. This brain area is responsible for processing emotions. 90% of people are right-handed, and only 10% are left-handed. Yes, that adds up. But there's also a very small percentage of those who can use both hands equally well, including writing, drawing, and doing any tasks. Naturally, ambidextrous people account for only 1% of the entire population, which is about 70 million people. If you want to check whether you're one of them, try to write the same phrase with both hands, or draw a circle first with your right and then with your left hand. If there's no difference, congrats! By the way, these exercises are very good for balancing the hemispheres of the brain, regardless of which hand is your dominant one. And if you have three hands, well, that's a different video. Your fingernails grow faster on your dominant hand. In other words, if you write with your right hand, it's all right. <laughs> and you'll have to trim those nails more often. Your fingernails also grow faster in the summer and during the day. Your skeleton will renew itself completely within 10 years. And yes, without surgery. An adult uses around 200 muscles just to make one step. So don't tell me I don't work out enough. Every minute, your body sheds more than 3,000 skin cells. It's almost 200,000 skin cells per hour and more than 9 pounds per year. Hey, it's the Shedding Skin Cells Weight Loss Plan. Ooh, sign up. But hey, don't worry, you still have about 300 million skin cells at any given moment. Plus, your skin completely renews itself every 28 to 30 days. The liver is the only human organ that can regenerate completely. As little as 25% of the original liver weight can get back to its full size. Some people can hear their eyeballs moving inside the eye sockets. Wow, that must be no fun. Unlike other parts of your body, your ears and nose never stop growing. Wow, that must be no fun. Your skin wrinkles if you stay in the water for too long. But not because it absorbs water. When your body's wet, wrinkled fingers and toes provide you with a better grip. You know, like when the treads on your car tires grip the road better when they're new? Your eyes are an amazing instrument. They can distinguish between 10 million different colors. Your brain uses more than 20% of your body's energy even when you're resting. When you're asleep, it still consumes almost as much power as when you're awake. It also burns around 330 calories per day at that. An adult person has about 25% of all their bones in the feet. Most of them are tiny but crucial. If these bones are out of alignment, so is the rest of the body. You breathe around 20,000 times a day. I've counted. Try not to stop. I actually set a personal best record today for consecutive days breathing. And I plan to top that tomorrow. Human bones are a real paradox. They're almost five times stronger than a steel bar with the same width, but can fracture on impact and are rather brittle. If a person has asnosmia, also called smell blindness, they can't distinguish and detect smells. But they can still be smelly. <laughs> Sorry. You start feeling thirsty when water loss is 1% of your body weight. More than 5% and you may faint. Water loss that's bigger than 10% of the body weight and dehydration can end a person, if you know what I mean. The strongest muscle in your body, based on its weight, is your jaw muscle. Yes, mine is way overdeveloped. At any moment, 50,000 cells in your body are getting replaced by new ones. Boy, that sounds like a company I used to work for. By the end of their life, the average person can recall up to 150 trillion pieces of information. 
except for where they left their car keys. Even if fingerprints are badly damaged, they still go back with their original pattern. Don't believe me? Hey, give it a whirl! Your brain's memory capacity is equivalent to about 4 terabytes on a hard drive, which is more than 8 million photos. People are the only living creatures that can naturally sleep on their backs. Even apes usually sleep in a sitting position, leaning on something. Don't wake them up. Your longest bone is your thigh bone, not your funny bone. And the tiniest one is in the ear. It's shorter than a grain of rice. Do you feel ticklish when you tickle yourself? Normally you wouldn't, unless someone else tickles you. It happens because the cerebellum area of the brain, which monitors movements, predicts the sensations caused by your own movements. Then it sends a signal to other parts of the nervous system to cancel these sensations. But some rare individuals can actually feel ticklish on their own. If you're not among them, touching a new texture that the brain doesn't yet recognize or using a scalp massager can help to excite your nerves and bring relaxation. Hey, you can give it a tickle test! If you want to check out the work of your vestibular system, try this simple trick. Stand on one foot and close your eyes. Most people lose balance at least during the first attempt. Your vestibular system includes many organs and systems throughout the body. Together, they allow your body to stay in balance in different positions. This system includes the inner ear and vision, which is why keeping balance is much easier in silence while your eyes are open. Can you wiggle your ears intentionally? Are you popular at parties for doing that? Congratulations! Around 22% of people on the Earth are capable of wiggling one ear. As for moving both ears at once, only 18% can do that. Ear wiggling used to be a common thing for our distant ancestors. Scientists believe they could perform a variety of movements with their ears. The group of muscles responsible for wiggling are called the auriculars. Mostly don't need it today. But some people claim that everyone can learn to move their ears. It only takes time and practice. Unfortunately, we still cannot acquire this classy habit of twitching an ear toward a sound source, as dogs and cats do. Nor can we actually lend an ear to someone. They're challenging to remove and reattach. Okay, look at yourself in the mirror. Yeah, right in the eye. See that little fold of tissue in the inner corner of both of your eyes? Well, get ready for this. It was actually once a third eyelid, or nictitating membrane. You can see it today in snakes or lizards, for example. The third eyelid was used for the same purpose as the other two, although it's unclear whether humans ever even had it fully grown. This membrane wasn't as thick as the two eyelids we have, and it could moisten the eye without obstructing the view. Right now, all we have left of it is this tiny fold in the corner of the eye, and most likely in the future we will lose it altogether. And maybe we'll finally stop waking up with that yucky crust that forms in our eyes overnight. Now, while you're still in front of the mirror, look lower. Lower. And lower still. Yeah, those are your toes. Say hello and goodbye. Scientists believe that, in some more or less distant future, we'll get rid of our toes completely. Our ancestors, the ancient primates, needed toes to climb trees more efficiently. They used both their hands and feet to grab tree branches. You can see it today in most monkeys and apes. They have longer and more flexible toes, along with flappier feet that allow them to get a hang on branches. Their feet mobility also lets them grab objects from the ground if necessary. For us humans, even lifting a pen we dropped on the floor with our toes is a complex task, but not for our primate relatives. Humans have evolved along a different route. We started walking upright and climbed down from trees, making rigid feet and shorter toes more of a necessity over time. Today, we still use our toes for balance when rolling from the balls of our feet to the tips of the toes, but our balance is now much more centered. It first moved towards our inner feet, which resulted in our pinky toes becoming so tiny, and the big toes, well, so big. As the balance moves away from the toes entirely, though, they are more likely to get fused together in the future. Now, turn around and look at your gorgeous behind. 
If you've ever fallen off a skateboard or slipped on an icy patch, you must remember what a terrible thing it is to hit that tailbone on a hard surface. Luckily for us, scientists predict it's going to go away pretty soon in the course of evolution. A tailbone is a feature that was left to us by our primate ancestors, too. And, yet again, they needed their tails to achieve more mobility among tree branches, using them to fling themselves from tree to tree. It's hard to say when humans drop the tail to never pick it back up, but facts are facts. The only thing we have reminding us of those glorious tree-jumping days is the pretty useless bone at the lower end of our backs. Okay, back to the face now. Open your mouth and say, ah. If you're a lucky individual to have no wisdom teeth, then you can be proud knowing that you're a product of evolution going strong. As you might know, teeth are the only part of the human body that doesn't repair itself. So if you lost all your teeth back in the dark times with no dentists around, The only choice you had was to eat liquid food. Not cool. Dentists believe that nature gave us wisdom teeth as a replacement for old, worn-out teeth we've had since childhood. That's why they grow so late in our lives. Today, though, with all the progress dentistry has gone through, we tend to keep all or most of our teeth intact until a very old age. And even if we lose some, we can always replace them with new ones. That makes wisdom teeth a vestigial thing. And they seem to understand that, since more and more people never have to go through the ordeal of teething as grown-ups. Speaking of teeth, our entire jaw has been changing for the past, oh, 10,000 years, and is predicted to change even more quite soon. In fact, it's been the fastest changer of all our body parts. Back in the day, when early humans survived by hunting and gathering, They needed massive, powerful jaws and bigger teeth to chew through raw meat and grind plants. As they came to cooking and then farming, their food became less tough, and so their jaws became smaller to fit the current needs. As time went by, our jaws shrank more and more, and they're likely to continue doing so in the future. With lots of processed foods that don't need much chewing, Humans of the future are probably going to have more delicate facial features with thin jaw lines and smooth cheekbones. Some body parts are not going away, but making a comeback instead. A hundred years ago, fabella, a tiny bone in the back of the knee, was only present in around 11% of people, and scientists thought it would disappear entirely pretty soon. But, against all odds, the brave little bone has made it into the knees of a whopping 39% of modern people. It's still unknown why exactly the fabella returned. But the most popular opinion is that we've grown taller and heavier than our ancestors. That much is true. As our diet became better and more nutritious, we learned to live longer and grow taller. We're now probably at the peak of our evolutionary height. And the fabella might have appeared in our bodies to provide a smooth surface for the tendon behind the knee to slide on, reducing friction and lowering the chances of damage because of wear and tear. Speaking of becoming bigger, let's get you back to that mirror, shall we? Flux a little bit. Ooh, nice biceps there. But unfortunately, not as nice as your ancient ancestors were. Not everything about evolution is 100% good for us. It's just a set of features that adapted best. And that's the case with our muscles. They've grown smaller and weaker with time, especially in our upper bodies. In ancient times, humans needed big and strong muscles to do a lot of handiwork. From hunting and schlepping their catch home to crafting tools and building shelters. Later, it didn't grow easier. Much the opposite, in fact, plowing fields and building complex structures required a lot of physical strength and endurance. But as the technological progress started booming, physical capabilities gave way to brain power. And machines began doing a lot of work for us, most of it even better than us. We shifted more towards sedentary lifestyle, spending more and more time in front of computers. And our muscles have been growing steadily smaller because we simply don't need them as much anymore. It's highly likely that, as the progress goes further, we'll become much slenderer and have more trouble gaining muscle mass. 
Our brain is of particular interest because it's been changing in a kind of a strange pattern. Our distant ancestors had a rather small brain at first, but the close relatives of humans, the Neanderthals, obtained a larger brain than the average modern human has. In the course of evolution, human brain grew larger. But in the more recent centuries, it started shrinking, and no one knows exactly why. Some experts say it might have to do with the change of our lifestyle and social connections. Early humans, especially hunter-gatherers, had to remember every plant and animal they saw, their properties, and how to use this or that thing. They were more generalist, having to learn everything their parents knew and find out more on their own. The modern human is more specialized in a certain area, delving deeper into some narrow subject while relying on their peers for the rest. Where ancient humans worked in groups in which anyone could potentially replace anyone else, we gather in teams, where each member has their own specific task and is irreplaceable. Still, brain size doesn't seem to matter that much, because orcas and elephants, for example, have bigger brains than us, which doesn't make them more intelligent. Happier? <laughs> I'm guessing yes. And if we venture further into the unknown, meaning millennia from today, we might even develop some pretty unbelievable traits. Some go as far as to say that if the tendency for the sea levels to rise persists, humans might adapt to living in water. We might evolve to have webbed hands and feet to swim better and develop gills to be able to breathe underwater. Or if we go into space and start colonizing other planets, we will inevitably have to adapt to their conditions. Mars, for instance, has lower gravity and a much colder climate. It will probably make humans taller and lighter, but also may cause them to grow much more body hair to keep warm. And planets with stronger gravity and higher temperatures will, on the contrary, turn humans into stocky, sturdy, and likely hairless creatures. The possibilities are endless. Hey, maybe due to social media, we'll just turn into little blobs with big eyes and thumbs and not much else. So much better for texting. Hmm, hope not. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with